A big thanks to Bernhard for sponsoring this episode. I'm going to show you how I turned this busting butt into a Christmas hat. This is a 10 kilogram busting butt. It's a Dutch heritage busting butt. It's locally grown. Look at this beautiful color. And I want you to appreciate the color because that red means flavor. Next to fat, the color of the meat is so important. It means that the pig has been able to roam around for a long period of time, build up hemoglobin in its meat, and it has almost the color of beef. That is a really, really good sign for a tasty ham. But this is still a long way from being an actual Christmas ham. Over the course of two days, I'm gonna apply multiple techniques to turn this beauty into something delicious that you want to put on your Christmas table. They call this a Boston butt, but it's actually a shoulder. And you can tell by this shoulder blade that sits inside this cut of pork. And my first job is to take that shoulder blade out. I want to have the perfect Christmas ham, and that means it's got to go. I'm going to use a sharp knife and I'm going to run it along the shoulder blade, separating the bone from the meat. This is a very easy job to do, but if you think it's too challenging, just ask your butcher to do it for you. Once I got it fully separated from the meat, it looks like this. Now you see it had to go because it would be hard to carve into our ham if it would be still inside. Now I'm going to tie it up with butcher's twine. And the goal is to get an even shape, to have it cook evenly and make it look good. And I'm tying it up against the grain so the ham is allowed to expand and contract while it's cooking. The goal of tying up the ham is creating an equal shape so it cooks evenly. And of course, make it look pretty. Now that we have something that looks like an actual ham, it's time we start working on flavor. I'm going to make a brine that I'm going to inject. This is the easy way of brining a ham. The brine is going to give our bust and butt the actual ham flavor. And it's going to keep it moist and juicy at the same time. And for a good basic brine, you're going to need one liter of water, one onion, 10 peppercorns, 100 gram of salt, and 100 gram of raw cane sugar. Bring that to a boil and then let it cool down again. Make sure you hit every spot of the ham. Don't worry if you're putting in too much and it flows out again. That's all part of the process. In this case, it's better to add too much with it seeping out than putting in too little with the risk of not brining parts of the ham. I was able to get around 750 milliliters of brine into this ham. Now I'm gonna pat it dry and start working on another layer of flavor. Of course, I'm talking about a rub. Starting with half a part salt, one part paprika powder, one part onion powder, and a quarter part garlic powder. I'm using a lot less salt than I otherwise would in a barbecue rub. That's because we already have a lot of salt going into that ham with that brine. To make sure that I can stick as much rub on this ham as possible, I'm going to use a binder. In this case, I'm using yellow mustard. It's going to help build up a beautiful crust and add another layer of flavor. Now that I got my ham packed full with flavor, it's time to stick it in the fridge and I'm gonna leave it there for two whole days. After 48 hours, our brining process has completed. Our busted butt went from a piece of pork to a Christmas ham. During that time, the injected brine fluid spread out through the ham and turned it into a proper ham without us having to put it in a bag or into a container filled with brining fluids. As a bonus, we put on a crust of spices. And as you can see, that crust went from a dry crust to a wet crust, which means all of the flavor from the crust has been drawn into the meat as well. This ham is ready to be smoked. I'm going to smoke this beautiful Christmas ham on the Bernhard pellet smoker. I'm going to set my ham in the middle of my smoker. That way I'm sure I'm going to have maximum airflow around the ham. To smoke the ham, I'm going to be using hickory pellets. They got a beautiful dark flavor. Pellets are nothing but compressed pieces of wood. And my pellet smoker is only using a little bit of electricity heat and a fan to heat up and smoke my meat. I'm using my meter thermometer to make sure that I got the perfect core temperature and keep an eye on the temperature inside the Bernard smoker. For this cook, I selected a smoking temperature of 140 degrees Celsius. This is a temperature that sits in between smoking and roasting. It's just low enough for me to get enough smoke on my ham to get the really smoky ham flavor 
and at the same time dry out the crust that we build up on the outside and render down the fat that's sitting on the bottom of this ham. In six hours time my Christmas ham rose to a core temperature of 65 degrees Celsius which is the sweet spot to take it off and let it rest. I'm gonna put it on my tabletop for around 20 minutes and that's the perfect amount of time to make a glaze in. Get your pan nice and hot, put in 100 grams of butter, 100 grams of raw cane sugar, 100 grams of honey and let that come to a boil. Once the sugar crystals are dissolved it's time to make this glaze special. Add a stick of cinnamon, add some star anise and some cloves. And now it's time to pour the glaze on top of the ham. Oh, <laughs> this is the magical moment. You want to do this on the dish, on the table. You don't want to have your guests miss out on this. Look at that. That is so magical. Wow. That is so gorgeous. Oh man, I want to get it everywhere. And then I'm just going to leave that stick of cinnamon on my ham. Just, just to make it, it real pretty. Look at that. Mm. And now it's time to gather your friends and family and start slicing into the ham. The ham that you've worked on for two days to make it the ultimate ham with a crunchy crust, a juicy inside and a crazy amount of flavor. Oh, I'm so happy with the outcome of this ham. Look at it, beautiful smoke ring, beautiful crust. And I, I didn't let you hear that, but the crust, it was so crunchy. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm biting into this, straight up. Mm -hmm. I've never tasted anything like this on Christmas before. Boston Butt Ham, who was that? Don't tell anyone because Boston Butt is really cheap. If you want your Christmas to succeed, this is the best option you've got. If Christmas would have a flavor, this will be it. Mm -hmm. This is what you expect at Christmas. And the funny thing is you can get a beef roast and get more expensive. But in reality, this is way better. Mm -hmm. Bust and butt, it's cheap. You brine it yourself. It's nice and fatty, nice and rich, flavorful. Well, what are you making for Christmas? I want to see all those recipes down on there. Thank you guys for watching. Big thanks to the patrons. And the YouTube members. And you want to have the recipe? Go to pitmasterx.com. Cheers, guys. See you guys next time. Until then, it's marketed. Mm. And keep on dreaming. Uh, Merry Christmas and everything. Mm. Mm. Oh, Merry Christmas. Mm.